very much. So I was trying to adjust my snare tension at the same time. It was a little tight for this tune. So I was trying to adjust that at the same time while playing. And, you know. But the, actually, that's a, kind of a good thing um, to mention is that um, you want to be able to get to your latch, your throw off each, e easily. So that that way, no matter, you know, if you need to go to just playing um, with no snares. <laughs> snares, you know, back to two and four with snares, that you can do it easily and accurately. Uh, with this one, I'm still getting used to the throw off on this side because it's kind of uh, different from where my other ones are at, where I normally have it more towards this front angle here. And then uh, it was hitting my leg too, so I was like, yeah, I know it's not in the best position. But no excuses, <laughs> just having fun that that way we can... Uh, you know, kind of use that experience together. We're like, oh, well, yeah, it's like messed up a little bit, but um, it's a good teaching experience no matter what, right? So um, that's a good thing to kind of incorporate because I know the, a lot of kiddos these days, I mean, it's like, you know, let me show how fast I can play. Let me, you know, all that kind of stuff. But you want to play musically. You want to play musically. It's, it's, um, and it, I totally get it because, uh, um, you know, drummers that are watching their favorite um, drummers play, they see just like, you know, lots of fills, lots of, lots of you know, fast chops, that kind of stuff, where really that's, that's not the, I mean, yes, that is the sign of a good drummer, um, but not the best drummers. So what, what the best drummers do is they put all of their chops into their grooves, into their grooves. So, um, take for example, like what is hip? You know that that doesn't have a lot of just flying chops throughout the whole thing, but his chops are in the grooves. So all the hits that the band matches together, you know, sometimes he has you know like a quick one bar fill that kind of thing, separating section. Um, but it's the it's the hits and his grooves that he's putting his chops into. So as you start to kind of evolve in your playing and evolve into, you know, other styles of music, um, the, my philosophy, you don't want to get stuck just getting comfortable playing what you know how to play. Um, and only, of course you want to play to the songs you enjoy playing to. Yes, I'm not saying not to do that. But at the same time, you want to expand your repertoire. So you want to make sure that you're always challenging yourself. Because if you never try, or you never even experiment, how do you know if you might not like the song or not, right? So it's important to kind of figure out, OK, do I like this, this type of genre? Um, what can I get out of it? And is it going to practice my abilities in a, in a way that I'm not normally practicing? Just playing things like, I don't know, toxicity, uh, system of a down, right? Where you've got all those different fills. You know, all the, I'm not going to play it all right now, but you get the point where it's you're like. You know, all those different fills that he's playing in it. Yeah, sure, that's cool. And it fits that context. And those are musical fills for that context, okay? So don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that um, practicing I into other genres and other feels, and it's really going to help you because the most versatile player that you are, the most hireable you are. So if you want to get work doing it, even just have, for fun on the weekends, whatever, you know, that kind of thing, you always want to try to focus on being the most versatile player you can. So that, that's why, you know, I'll play sometimes to rock, sometimes I'll play to fusion, sometimes I'll play to funk, and that's obviously my favorite genre to play. Um, after just, I started with double bass drum pedals, like, I, you know, I have doubles here again. But you know what I found is that after training my muscle memory um, and working so hard to be able to keep time with the hat at the same as playing with um, one bass drum pedal, that it's not necessary. So for faster stuff, yes, yes, it is. It is faster. If you're going to be playing um, 30 second notes, 100%. Um, but just for straight 16s and triplets, that kind of stuff, 
You can easily do that with one bass drum pedal while keeping time with the hat. So just to give a quick example, say you're playing, I don't know, um, of the, just going back to like toxicity, um, where that's in a triplet form. And that's another thing you want to develop your ear so you can hear that you know, then you're hearing one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. So then before the song's even started, before, or the song, before the drums have even started in the song, you already know, you know, what the feel is so that you can count um, your note values appropriately and you know where to anchor everything, that kind of thing. So, you know, even within that, You've got um, a lot of those feels are just like. And a different pattern in that exact, the exact pattern. Uh, he's using, um, you know, and then how to get back to V1 in the appropriate time, because if you're hearing that as straight eights, it's not going to work out in the proper placement. So if you're hearing one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and there are some other parts that have different grooves, I get that, but you want to be counting it as one and a two and a three and a four and a one, two, three, four. That, that's kind of way you want to focus with that song at least so um just giving you you know things to think about as you kind of evolve your playing and start to expand your repertoire because you you never know what you might really really enjoy doing and if you want to get into school band um you know number one you're going to be required to read count and have versatility and um so that's why i you know the system that i follow and it, that's just been sh shown to work, you know, with countless generations of people, is that um, you want to make sure that you're uh, approaching it gradually, but not getting stuck in only what you feel comfortable applying, that kind of thing. So that's why, like, starting in worship bands is great. You know, that's that's where they're going to give you a lot of leeway. You'll learn a lot of different material. You'll you'll learn how to work with a band. You'll learn how to uh, incorporate a click while listening to the parts. You get, you'll learn how to work with the, the gear, you know, AVM interfaces, all that kind of stuff, which is really, really important. And then, regardless if you kind of enjoy that or not, you know, you can still take that into what you're going to play into the future. So, very, very important in my estimation to practice all your feels. So, you don't want to just practice, you know, all of your. Uh, Rock feels, which which are fun, and I know younger kids have a fun time playing, you know, faster 30 seconds, how fast can I play, how fast can I play, you know, that kind of thing, but it, it's really, you'll see that it's, it's not so much a sport, you want to play musically, and as you start to, that's one of the last things to come, is the, the evolution of knowing when to hold back and when to play. So, um, it took me a long time as well, so, you know, it was just, at first, it was just like, oh, chop, 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 chop. Let me show what I can do. Let me show what I can do. But you do that for 30 seconds. There, it, the audience face glazes over. They're like, okay, we've heard it for 30 seconds. You've basically already shown what you can do for the whole rest of, you know, we got like maybe 30 minutes left to play, and you've shown everything you can do in 30 seconds. So you don't want to do that. Um, you know, you want to hold back, that's my opinion, I was going to say, but um, you want to hold back so that that way you pick your spots, pick musical spots, and you're, you're going to get a chance to, to put that stuff in, in there, but you got to pick your spots. Because if you're just playing that st kind of stuff all the, all the time, you know, we call it flurries, um, and I know that a lot of new school players, and they're killer players, but it's just a lot of linear stuff, and it, it, it's not hard, um, so that's why a lot of them do it.
but it's just getting used to the style of playing linear. But, um, you know, in my estimation, and you'll find a lot of the um, people that are way smarter than me and do it lo way longer than me have the same opinions where it's like, yeah, you, w you want to make sure that you're not just getting stuck in those ruts and only practicing those skills. Um, and it, it, practice to your favorite songs at first, sure, get that, get that stuff going. But as you start to progress, you want to make sure that you're practicing other stuff. All right, guys, love you. I'm about to do um, a little rehearsal here with um, Jace not coming today. Unfortunately, um, his brother's not doing very well. His uh, brother has glial, glial blastoma, which is um, a very, very, um, a very, very bad brain cancer. So, um, oh, man, it kills me. Um, so he's not going to be here today, but, um, Jeff and David are going to be here today. And what time is it? Yeah, they're going to be here in 10 minutes. Um, so we'll see what kind of happens with today. And that gives us a chance to kind of practice some other stuff too, that, you know, just kind of have share some ideas and get some other stuff going too. So, uh, but just kind of showing, this is why I do what I do. And, um, you know, you can see as I, I'm just playing. It's it's my spirit playing. I, it, it, you know, I kind of check out, and yeah, I'm I'm there. I'm looking at occasionally, make sure I don't miss the surface, that kind of thing. Um, but for me, it's it, it's all top down. Where I, I'm hardly even there. I'm just kind of being played through, if you take it in in that way. And that takes a while to to kind of um, you know get to, but. Uh, it's a it's a theta state so the and there's scientific research behind it too so and being a psychologist you know i do, i uh, am doing research on that stuff all the time but uh thank you guys for listening to my spiel after the tune and i hope you guys have a great a great rest of your day and then as soon as we get some videos here in a little bit with the uh trio then i'll post those as well love you guys take care have a great rest of your weekend bye bye